Welcome back everyone to another top 5 video where I choose 5 games, shows, movies, mangas, etc. that you will more than likely enjoy. Based on my previous top 5 videos, everyone pretty much liked my recommendations so I could technically say that I have a good taste in stuff. Of course, this is strictly based on my taste and my opinions alone, so none of the games listed are ranked by which is best or better. They're all equally good games that you should play. Today's top 5 will consist of games that have Yandere heroines as the main focus in the game. Just like my previous top 5 Yandere games you should play, this is just going to add to your library of games. Some of these games are very popular and you probably already played them, while others are very niche and most likely have never heard of. Without further ado, let's begin. Now let's start with number 5, Crimson Grey. Release date, July 14th, 2017. Game genre, visual novel. Developer, Sierra Lee. Platform, PC. Summary. John is a young man suffering from severe depression. As he loses his sense of purpose in life, he begins to see the world in unfocused grey. Just when he begins to lose all hope, John meets a girl. A very special girl. My thoughts. By now, a lot of people have already played this game or at least heard of it. As you can see from the gameplay, this is a visual novel game based around two characters. The main girl is a yandere who lacks basic common sense when it comes to relationships. This is due to a specific reason which will be explained in the game when you play it. This game has a pretty depressing story to it. Normally, yandere games are very fantasy-like for a lack of a better word. So, compared to other Yandere games, this is more based on reality, which is nice because some could relate to it. Although, if you're easily disturbed and triggered by mental illness and depression, then I don't recommend you play this game. Otherwise, it's a solid 10 out of 10. Number 4 Crimson Grey Dusk and Dawn. Release date October 5th, 2018. Game genre Visual Novel. Developer, Sierra Lee. Platform, PC. Summary. Lizzie has it all. A loving boyfriend, a beautiful collection of knives, and an intense desire to murder. She escaped the conspiracy that forced her to kill in self-defense, but now she needs to adjust to normal college life. My thoughts. If you played the original Crimson Grey game, this is basically a sequel of what happens when the main characters decide to run from the corporation. As a sequel to the original game, this actually builds up Lizzie's or the main Yandere girl character. You actually play as Lizzie as you try to struggle to live a normal life in college with your new boyfriend. The gameplay is pretty short compared to the previous game, but that's only because I got a good ending. I'm not really sure how many endings were put in this game, but I guess that's something for you to find out. Number 3, Mix Or. Release date, 2013. Game genre, visual novel. Developer, Charon. Platform, PC. Summary. A young man named Kantaro wakes up in a hospital bed with amnesia. He has no memory of what happened to him and is confronted by a mysterious girl who makes a claim about their relationship. And why is she pretending to be someone she isn't? My thoughts. This game is actually one of my favorite Yandere games since you can actually experience three different stories. Each heroine character is based off types of tea slash coffee which is pretty weird but interesting at the same time. Unlike some of the other Charon games where the developer has you walking around solving mysteries, this is strictly visual novel. Only one of the three girls are actually Yandere so just a fair warning. The other two are either mentally ill or a manipulator. I won't spoil any more than that since it's a pretty good game and you should play it yourself. The only downside would be that each girl only has two endings. The usual playtime for each route takes about an hour or more depending on how you read. So you can complete the whole game in a rough 3 hours and 30 minutes ish or less. I highly recommend this game if you don't mind the pixel art style. I'm sure a lot of people expect this one to be number one, but I just, I'm just going to put this at number two because number one actually is kind of the original Yandere and you'll see why. So number two, 
Doki Doki Literature Club. Release date, September 22nd, 2017. Game genre, visual novel. Developer, Team Salvato. Platform, PC. Summary. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's always been a dream of mine to make something special out of the things I love. Now that you're a club member, you can help me make that dream come true in this cute game. As said by Monica. My thoughts. This game is god tier, like, not only is this a free game, it's probably one of the most disturbingly best psychological horror visual novel plots you could ever read. Of course, that's only my opinion since it has many waifus you could choose, so you know, <laughs> I gotta love that waifu. As long as her name starts with Mona and ends with Ka. The game is very lengthy, so if you don't really have the patience to read through it all, this might not be a good game for you. It will actually take a while before you get to the disturbing parts of the game, and every decision you make will determine your outcome. The best thing about this game is the fact that it breaks the fourth wall, kinda like Deadpool, but of course, you will have to play it yourself to find out. Now for this last one, this is actually a very niche game, um, I'm not talking about niche as in like nobody knows about it, but like a niche as in it's only been out in Japan, it has never released in the US states, so yeah. So here it is. Number 1. Burger King Foot Lettuce. Burger King Foot Lettuce. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, number 1. Mirai Nikki, the 13th Diary Holder. Release date, April 26, 2010. Game genre, visual novel. Developer, Kadokawa Games LTD. Platform, PSP. Summary. There's actually not a summary for this game because it's, it's very hard to find, but this is what I got from it. it. Takes place after the events of the original story, a new survival game that has started, and there's a 13th diary owner named Azami Kirisaki. My thoughts. Unless you can read Japanese, this game is pretty much unplayable to the native English speaker. As far as I can tell, this game is based after the events of the original anime show. Apparently, there's a 13th diary holder, which means a new game has started and someone will probably end up becoming god of the third world. Although, that's just my speculation. I'm glad that they expanded on the original story of Mirai Nikki, but unfortunately, unless someone in English patches this old PSP game, no one will be able to play it for many years or, you know, never, for all I'm concerned. From the little information I could find, you know it has this mode called Yandere Operation where it will have her make unrational decisions or something like that once her meter is full. No idea how it works, but that's just my assumption. Looks good though. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for today. Before I end this video, I have an update on my Yandere Stories Episode 11 Part 4. I know a lot of you have been asking me to release Part 4 Episode 11, but unfortunately due to some unforeseen circumstances, the main Yandere voice actor for Megami will no longer be able to provide her voice. So if the voice of Megumi sounds off or different in part 4, just bear in mind that it's a new voice actor voicing her. I really hope to release it two weeks after the editions end, but we will see. Also speaking of Yanderes, make sure to check out my new clothing brand called Mirai Garu. I have an exclusive design in the style of a manga with a Yandere who is about to strike down her enemy in the official Mirai Garu store. Of course, I will leave a link in the description below if you're interested. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great Memorial Weekend and till next time, peace.